All right. So, uh, guys, today we're going to start moving into something that's kind of new, um, but it's... Oh, uh, yeah, screen. Thanks. Um, so it's kind of new, but um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's kind of the same principle as everything you've done so far. Okay, so, but don't, just don't be intimidated by it because it's actually remarkably simple. Um, what we're going to do is start the reflected ceiling plan. So the reflected ceiling plan does have um, some intricacies in how it's detailed, but what I want you guys to focus on is the simplicity of a schematic plan. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by the simplicity of it in a second. So if you look at your drawing set, what we're going to be emulating is... Um, the, the ceilings that you see in the space. And I want to point out this segment right here is that we've got two primary conditions. We have, um, and because, and this happens a lot more often in residential structures than it does in commercial structures where you might have some ceilings that are dropped and framed like what you see in the bathroom, but then you have some ceilings that are direct applied to the structure above, like what you see in bedroom two. So we're going to do both of those, but in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have the proper, uh, I guess, assemblies to make that happen. Um, so generally speaking, I just want to make sure that I have the right ceiling material, and then I'm not so much worried about like exactly how many layers of jip and stuff like that. But anyway, so what we're looking at here is um, something like this, which is an F4A. That's uh, telling you what the ceiling is in, say, the garage. And then uh, you've got something like this, which is an F6A, and that's telling you what the ceiling is in the bathroom. So if we look at F4A, it says uh, one layer, five eighths type X jip board, um, and it basically is just telling you that it's attached, it's direct applied to the structure above. Um, and then F6A is a drop ceiling, also jip board on um, wood framing. Okay, so that's an important note. Um, so the uh, let's get back into the file here real quick and just make sure that we have those assemblies first. So uh, let's go to the ceiling command that's up there. So I think you guys kind of figured by now that we, since we have floors, we have roofs, we have walls, all that stuff, we obviously have a different ceiling family. So um, click on ceiling and we're just going to make sure that we have the right um, materials. So we definitely do have a uh, gypsum board ceiling. That's what GWB stands for, gypsum wall board. Um, but this one defaults to metal stud. It's not really that critical at this stage, but we will change this just to be sure. So click on that and let's duplicate it. And let's call it um, GWB on wood stud. And you can abbreviate um, wood with WD. All right, the only other thing we need to do is uh, change the core structure to be a wood material. Um, and I think we do have a wood stud material. Yeah, wood stud. That's all right. This is an easy one. You'll be able to catch up no problem. All right. So um, once you've done that, just hit, <coughs> hit OK. Um, and then... I mentioned uh, one other thing about the, the ceiling that gets direct applied to the structure above. In that case, then your, uh, if, if you have that case in your project, then your ceiling is just going to be gypsum board. That's it. It's just a 5 8 inch layer of gypsum board. So we can duplicate this again, and we'll just call it GWB. And then, um, even though the gypsum wall board is a finish, you have to have a structure layer. So unfortunately, we're going to have to um, move this up into the um, core, and then we're going to remove the, the stud layer. So we'll get rid of this. And I think it might actually force us to change that to a structure. No, I guess it doesn't. OK. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's all we got for that. So we, now we have, um, and I think it's, I, I kind of studied this a little bit right before class here. I, I don't believe. We have any other types of, um, primarily anyway, um, any other types of uh, ceiling material. So we'll go with this for now. Um, but what I want you to do is make sure that wherever there's a soffit material, that that differs from the, uh, the, the main roof, I guess. So are you guys familiar with what a soffit is? Okay. I need to pull up a picture then.
You see it a lot in like uh, residential transitions. Um, let me look for an interior one. There we go. So a soffit is kind of something like this, right? Where you have a big roof. There, that's a, that's a good example, right? So you've got you've got your main roof, which is like the ACT ceiling. That's an acoustic tile ceiling, the one that's higher. And then you have a soffit that drops down for a number of different reasons. It could be um, to change levels in in ceiling, just you know, architecturally design wise, or it could be because there's a channel where you're running some HVAC ducting through. Um, that would be something closer to this. There might be uh, HVAC in that, um, or just to put lighting in it, something like that. So those are all soffit conditions. Um, so that's what you see in your plans here. This dash element is a soffit condition, and you know that because you've got um, you've got this dimension right there and this dimension right here. Right? These are called spot elevations, and they tell you how far above the f the finished floor below that particular surface is. Because remember, this is a this is a reflected ceiling plan. So we're literally looking up at the ceiling, right? And it's telling me you know, I'm looking at this, and that is eight and a half feet above this floor. Does that make sense? Okay. Forgive me if I'm beating a dead horse and you guys already know this stuff, but um, that's a spot elevation. Yeah. And and in case you're curious, you can find that under the annotation tab right there. Okay, so um, without further ado, I guess, um, let's take a look at, oh, uh, one more thing, sorry. Uh, there's something to note on particularly the second floor because here on the first floor, um, we have eight foot 11 and three eighths. That's because we have a 12 inch uh, second floor assembly. Remember our, our second floor is at, um, I think we set it to 10, 10 feet, right? Second floor? Yeah, second floor height. Yeah, 10 feet, right? So we have a 12 inch uh, depth of our, our second floor uh, structure, and then we have 5 eighths of an inch attached underneath that. So that's why that spot elevation says 8 foot 11 and 3 eighths. Okay, I'll show you in a sec. But um, you guys just need to be aware of that. But when you get to the second floor, you'll have these spaces that don't have any spot elevation at all. And that's because it's sloping with, this, with the roof above, our sloped roof. Okay. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to kind of preference, preface that stuff and uh, just give me a second and I'll swap into a new video and I'll show you applying these things.